Most geographers divide Canada's vast and diverse lands into seven regions, the Appalachian Highlands, the St. Lawrence Lowlands, the Hudson Bay Lowlands, the Canadian Shield, the Arctic Islands, the Interior Plains, and the Mountain West or Cordillera. The Cordillera contains two large mountain ranges, the Rockies and the Pacific Range. Because the Pacific Range hugs much of Canada's western shores, there are many fjords in the region. Fjords are long, narrow inlets with mountain walls on two sides, and they often provide a good route for watercraft because the mountains offer protection against stormy weather. For the same reason, many ocean animals are found in the fjords of Western Canada. In addition to animals and ships, islands are another feature along the coast. The islands are actually mountains covered by ocean water, except at their peaks. So the Pacific Range of Western Canada extends beyond the coastline. A large basin and plateau lie to the east of the coastal mountains. Still farther eastward lie the Rockies. Many rivers fed by melting snows from both the Rocky Mountains and Pacific Range are found in this basin area. At the southern reaches of the basin, a large number of orchards take advantage of this plentiful supply of water. Kiwi fruit, apples, berries and other fruits come from this area. The Canadian Rockies, as we've mentioned, lie to the east of the basin. To many people, the Canadian Rockies, these are in the province of Alberta, make up some of the world's most breathtaking mountain scenery. Many places here look as if they are picture postcards come to life. Rockies are a major recreational area, golfing, skiing, rock climbing, hiking, and sightseeing play a key role in the region's economy. A large number of islands lie northeast of the Rockies. These Arctic islands make up the second major land region of Canada. The three largest Arctic islands are Ellesmere, Victoria, and Baffin. Baffin is the fifth largest island in the world. Much of Baffin, as well as most of the other islands in the region, are located inside the Arctic Circle, and so are cold and snowy much of the year. Glaciers cover much of this area. The rest is tundra where the subsoil is permanently frozen and surface lands are covered with only the hardiest of plants. The climate is so cold here, trees are unable to take root and grow. The interior plains lie southwest of the Arctic islands. This region covers a large portion of Canada's midsection. The third of the country's seven land regions, it is for the most part covered with grasslands, some of which are used for horse and cattle ranching. Huge grain farms also are found on the interior plains. For this is Canada's breadbasket region, where it's not uncommon for some 30 million metric tons of wheat to be harvested each year. While a large portion of that wheat is used by Canadians, much of the rest is shipped overseas. Hay, oats, barley, rye, canola, and many other crops also are grown on interior plains lands. Canada's largest region, the Canadian Shield, 
covers approximately one half of the country's total land area. The shield forms a vast horseshoe around Hudson Bay, except at the south, and for the most part is composed of ancient rock and low hills. The shield is where many of Canada's large forests are located. It is also an area noted for its thousands upon thousands of lakes, as well as spectacular rapids and magnificent waterfalls. The next region, the Hudson Bay Lowlands, lies south of Hudson Bay. Sometimes called the Arctic Coastal Plains, it's covered by flat swamplands and stunted trees. Huge deposits of peat, or decayed vegetation, are found here. Although the St. Lawrence Lowlands make up the smallest of the Canadian regions, it is where most Canadians live. Toronto, Canada's largest city, with more than four million people in its metropolitan area, is located in this region. The St. Lawrence Lowlands are mostly flat, but there are a few gently rolling hills in the region. Ponds and lakes often punctuate these hills. Some of Canada's best farmland is found here. In fact, about one-third of the country's total agricultural output comes from the St. Lawrence Lowlands. Principal crops include corn, a wide array of fruits, including cherries, all kinds of vegetables, and canola, seen here, as well as barley, soybeans, oats, and maize. Now, on to the last, but certainly not least, Canadian region, the Appalachian Highlands. Found at the far eastern reaches of the country, large portions of it border the Atlantic Ocean. For the most part, it's hilly in the Appalachian Highlands. But geographically, the region is perhaps most notable for its rocky shoreline, with many small inlets and bays that provide excellent harbors for fishing vessels. There are many forests here too, as well as farmland on Prince Edward Island and along the St. John River in the province of New Brunswick. In fact, rich soil is one of Canada's abundant natural resources. It helps nourish the vast wheat fields of the interior plains, the orchard trees in the far west and St. Lawrence lowlands, and the vegetables that grow in the Appalachian region 